With as many as 8 million species of animal on Earth, we have only documented 1.2 million of them. And of those, some are so rare, it's unlikely any of us will ever get the chance to see them in person. In this video, we're looking at 10 of the rarest species of animal on Earth. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you like this kind of content, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing to my channel. I want to take a moment before getting started to thank all of my patrons, including my newest patrons, Katie and Ben. One of the animals on the list today is a patron request. If you want to have a say in the content I make next, join me on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Now let's take a look at the world's rarest animals. The vaquita is a species of porpoise found only in the northernmost part of the Gulf of California in Baja, Mexico. It's the world's smallest cetacean, reaching a maximum length of only 150 centimeters. They only inhabit a very small region of shallow water, giving them the smallest range of any marine mammal in the world. The species is so small and so rare, no evidence of them surfaced until 1958, when the skull of one was found on a beach. Scientists knew it was a unique species, but had no idea what they looked like. Thirty years later, in 1985, a few more specimens were discovered, and for the first time, scientists got to see the species. Vaquitas are generally gray and white, with a tall dorsal fin, rounded face, and black patches around the eyes and mouth. Their name, vaquita, means little cow in Spanish, and they're often observed alone or in pairs, though they have been observed in pods of up to 10 individuals on occasion. They feed on fish, crustaceans, and squid, but little else is known about their ecology. In 1997, there were about 600 vaquitas estimated to be living in the Gulf of California. Ten years later, that number had dropped to only 150. In 2018, their population was down to 19. And today, there are probably less than 10 still surviving in the Gulf. There are two main reasons for their decline. For one, they live close to shore, giving them greater exposure to pollution. But the main reason is that they have regularly been caught as bycatch in fishermen's nets. Because the species is a mammal and needs air to breathe, when one gets caught in a net, it holds them underwater, causing them to drown. Today, fishing is banned within their range, and several conservation efforts are underway. But the complex socio-economic realities of the region combined with the already critically low numbers of Akita, has meant that conservation efforts have seen no success. It's probable that the species will be gone within a matter of years. Gibbons are small apes found primarily in Southeast Asia. One species of gibbon found only on the island of Hainan in Vietnam is aptly named the Hainan gibbon. It was once considered to be a subspecies of the eastern black-crested gibbon, but through genetic testing and after noticing differences in morphology and vocalization, the two were officially split into separate species. Both species show sexual dichromatism with the males being primarily black and the females being primarily a golden color with black patches on the head. They were both once widespread throughout Vietnam and up to half of China, but over the past century, up to 95% of gibbon habitat in the region has been cleared for human expansion. The species has been hunted for food and traditional medicine and forced to compete with humans for limited resources all while being pushed into smaller and smaller natural spaces. 
In the 1960s, the eastern black-crested gibbon disappeared. It was feared extinct until the year 2002, when a tiny population was rediscovered in northern Vietnam. Then in 2006, another small population was discovered across the border in China. Today, there are an estimated 135 left in the world. Meanwhile, the Hainan gibbon's habitat has been shrinking due to deforestation, primarily for illegal pulp paper plantations. The most recent count found only 22 Hainan gibbons living in one family of 11, one family of seven, and four lone gibbons who were not part of either family group. The species is at risk of being wiped out by even a single extreme weather event or epidemic. Another group of primates that aren't monkeys or apes are the lemurs. Found only on the island of Madagascar, off the eastern coast of Africa, 85% of the animals found on the island are found nowhere else on Earth. There are over 100 species of lemur, with more regularly being discovered. One of the medium-sized species is the greater bamboo lemur, which are brown-gray overall with long tails and chestnut-colored eyes. The species used to range over much of the eastern side of the island, but after most of the forests they inhabited were destroyed, they seemed to disappear. They were considered extinct until a small population was rediscovered in 1986, and since then a few more populations have been found. But they're restricted to tiny patches of forest, primarily in national parks. These lemurs feed almost entirely on one species of bamboo, with a strong preference for their shoots. Interestingly, these shoots have high quantities of cyanide in them. If a human ate the same quantity of bamboo shoots as the greater bamboo lemur, we would die. It's still not known how they're able to deal with the amount of cyanide that they consume. With farming, logging, and hunting still posing major threats to the greater bamboo lemur, it's critically endangered. And today, there are only an estimated 500 left, spread across 11 fragmented subpopulations. Every type of plant and animal species in Madagascar has suffered under the extreme human expansion of the past century. This includes the Madagascar pochard, which may be the rarest species of waterfowl in the world. The Madagascar pochard is a diving duck that's mostly chestnut and brown, with white markings on the wings, belly, and tail. The species prefers lakes and marshes with shallow water, lots of aquatic plants, and that are heavily surrounded by vegetation. They mainly lived in the Lake Alaotra Basin, on the northeastern part of the island. In the early 1950s, the species rapidly declined. The basin became heavily altered for rice plantations, and then several species of fish were introduced. These fish regularly ate the pochard's babies, and were likely even capable of eating adult birds. By the early 1960s, the Madagascar pochard was gone, and many assumed it had gone extinct. In 1991, a single male duck was spotted on Ala Otra Lake. He was captured and kept at the Antanan Arivo Botanical Gardens. One year later, he died, and major campaigns to rediscover the species were launched. But they all failed to find any living pochards. That is until November 2006, when a small population was found still living in a crater lake high up a mountain. The climate was not ideal for the species, and because of how cold it was and how deep the lake was, the pochards were failing to thrive. Only about 25 birds were still holding on. Beginning in 2009, clutches of eggs were collected and reared in captivity. By 2017, there were 90 Madagascar pochards being kept in the breeding program. A new viable habitat was identified for the species on Lake Sophia. Conservationists educated the surrounding communities about the ducks 
and worked with them to help improve the habitat, getting ready for their release. In 2018, 21 birds were released to Lake Sophia. In order to give them additional protection, salmon farming cages from Scotland were adapted to act as aviaries for the ducks. They were inverted to float above the water, offering the released ducks food and shelter should they require it. The following year, 12 ducklings were counted, and the conservationists celebrated what seemed like a successful introduction. But it wasn't long-lived. Today, less than 10 are believed to still be holding on at Lake Sophia, and even those are mostly unaccounted for. A population of about 50 lives at Bamanavika, and 94 are still in breeding facilities, bringing the global population to about 150 Madagascar pochards today. The orange-bellied parrot is a beautifully colored small species of Australian parrot. The males are a grass-green color, females are a duller green, the species used to be widespread along the coast of eastern Australia, from Sydney to Adelaide and down to Tasmania. It's one of only three species of migratory parrots in the world. The entire population breeds in southwest Tasmania, close to the coast. Then they migrate to Bass Strait in southeastern Australia to spend the winter. Over the past century, wild habitat in the area has been seriously degraded or lost altogether. As a result, the parrots found it harder to find places to forage. In the early 20th century, they were regularly reported around Sydney. By the 1960s, it was still common around the York Peninsula, but by 2017, only 14 were recorded in the wild. In 2019, the wild population saw a huge boom and had increased to over 100 birds. But again, by 2022, they were back down to only 51. Thankfully, the species was also kept in aviculture, and breeding programs began in an effort to preserve the species. Today, there are over 300 orange-bellied parrots in captivity, with less than 50 estimated to still be surviving in the wild. They're listed as critically endangered. In southwest Los Angeles County lies a stretch of land known as the Palos Verdes Peninsula. It's situated on the edge of one of the largest cities in North America, and much of it has already been converted into rolling terracotta-roofed suburbs. But this peninsula is home to one of the rarest butterflies in the world, and most don't even know it exists. The Palos Verde Blue was described in 1977. It's a small butterfly with a wingspan of about 3 centimeters. The underside of their wings is silver with dark spots surrounded by white rings. On the upper side of the wings, females are pretty drab, being mainly brown, while males are a bright silver blue with dark black edges. The butterflies were only known to occur in one single site on the peninsula, and they relied entirely on loco weed for reproduction. In 1980, they were listed under the U.S. Endangered Species Act and officially protected. But in 1982, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes decided they wanted a new baseball field. The only site where the butterflies were known to live was bulldozed, and the Hesse Community Park was constructed. Some habitat remained along the edge of the park, and the year after the baseball field was built, between three and six Palos Verdes Blues were photographed. But the city felt that the growth of weeds along the edge of the park posed a fire risk, and they scraped the area to reduce the weeds. This destroyed the last of the butterfly's habitat, and with that, it was believed that the species had gone extinct. In 1987, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service took the city of Rancho Palos Verdes to court claiming that they were well aware that it was the only habitat for the butterfly, and that the city was in violation of the U.S. Endangered Species Act. The city claimed that no one complained about butterflies until bulldozing was complete. Ultimately, the city won, 
because the U.S. Endangered Species Act only protected species against the acts of individuals. This led the act to be amended the following year to include protection from individuals, corporations, partnerships, trusts, associations, or any other private entity. Then in 1994, the butterflies were rediscovered at the Defense Fuel Support Point at San Pedro. While they looked identical, this group of butterflies was actually using two species of plants as hosts for their eggs, loco weed and deer weed. This meant that there was a higher probability of the species surviving. Mass rearing in captivity began, and by 2008, as many as 2,400 butterflies were successfully reared. Several areas are being looked at as locations for reintroduction, but today the wild population of Palos Verdes blue butterflies fluctuates around 300 insects. When you think of a salamander, perhaps you think of a small, brightly colored, lizard-like amphibian hiding under a rock or a log. But there are some salamanders in East Asia that are unlike any other because of the huge sizes they obtain. The Chinese giant salamander is among the largest amphibians in the world. They're considered living fossils, meaning that they have gone unchanged for millions of years since they appeared in the fossil record. They typically reach lengths of about 1.2 meters and weights of up to 30 kilograms. However, they're capable of reaching lengths as long as 1.8 meters and weigh as much as 50 kilograms. The species lives in the rocky mountain rivers that feed the Yangtze River, and they're completely aquatic. Unfortunately, the salamanders are considered a delicacy in China, and they're hunted extensively for their meat. To make matters worse, the rivers that they live in are becoming more polluted and disturbed, aiding in the decline of the species. Today, salamander farms are abundant in China, and they hold millions of animals. Salamander farming is a new industry in the country. As a result, many of the animals on the farms have been caught in the wild. Thankfully, with ongoing captive breeding success, it's hoped that pressure on wild populations will decrease. As they breed, the government encourages farms to also release some stock to maintain wild populations, which are still decreasing regularly. But there is a fear that the farmed salamanders will bring disease with them. Ranavirus causes hemorrhaging, swelling, and death, and is a common infection on the farms. It's estimated that there are less than 50,000 salamanders left in the wild today, and the population continues to decline. The islands of the Caribbean have suffered huge losses of endemic species in the last 500 years. It's estimated that as many as 70% of the species unique to the islands have gone extinct in the last few centuries. St. Lucia is an island nation in the Eastern Caribbean and is home to one of the rarest snakes in the world, the St. Lucia racer. St. Lucia racers aren't venomous. They're about 125 centimeters long and they hunt rodents and lizards by day in the forests and shrublands of the island. The species was described in 1887, but was already on the decline. Around this time, mongooses were introduced to the island, and the snakes stood little chance. Not only did the mongooses eat all of the snakes' prey, they also attacked and killed the racers themselves. By 1936, the species was thought to be extinct. Off the coast of St. Lucia are a few smaller islands. One is Maria Major. It's a 10-hectare island off St. Lucia's south coast. In 2012, a tiny population of only 11 snakes was found still surviving on the island. They managed to hold on there because Maria Major had remained free of mongooses. A breeding program was established and the wild population is still at less than 20 snakes. In 2017, a tourism development project proposed the building of a causeway from the mainland to Maria Major 
to allow people to walk across to the islet. But this would allow invasive predators like rats easy access to the last refuge for the species. As of yet, it has not been built, and the St. Lucia racer remains critically endangered. The story of the Jamaican iguana is almost identical to the story of the St. Lucia racer. These lizards are the second largest species of animal native to the island of Jamaica, only after the Jamaican boa. The iguanas can reach lengths of 150 centimeters and weigh as much as 2 kilograms. They were described as being a common sight on the island by an Irish botanist in 1688. But when mongooses were introduced at the end of the 19th century, they fed on the iguana's young and the population declined rapidly. The last living lizard was seen in 1940, and by 1948 they were assumed extinct. One day in 1990, Edwin Duffus was out hunting when his dog trapped a Jamaican iguana in a hollow log. The iguana was injured, but survived. It was sent to the Hope Zoo, where it was rehabilitated and remained on display. Two small populations were subsequently discovered, still surviving in the Hillshire Hills, just southwest of Kingston. A total of 50 iguanas still exist. Captive breeding programs are active in Jamaica and the US, but the species is still threatened. For one, the lizards cannot be released until they've reached a certain size where the mongooses can no longer eat them. But they're also threatened by the charcoal industry. In order to produce charcoal, hardwood trees are required, so the forests the iguanas rely on are regularly subjected to illegal logging. Devil's Hole is a geothermal pool within a limestone cavern in the Amargosa Desert in the U.S. state of Nevada. The surface area of Devil's Hole is about 22 meters long by 3.5 meters wide, and the water maintains a constant 33 degrees Celsius year-round. Described in 1930, the Devil's Hole pupfish is a unique species of fish found only in this one limestone cavern. The males of the species are electric blue, while juveniles and females are more yellow. Uniquely, the fish lacks pelvic fins. It can only live in the top 24 meters of the water, so it has a very small range in which to survive. It feeds on everything it finds in the cavern, including beetles, snails, small crustaceans, and algae. The species seemed to be doing fine until the 1960s and 70s, when the nearby agricultural irrigation lowered the level of the water dramatically. Within the cavern is a small shelf that the fish rely on for feeding and reproduction. As the water lowered, less and less of the shelf was submerged, pushing the Devil's Hole pupfish closer and closer to oblivion. A series of court cases ensued over water ownership, and they went all the way up to the Supreme Court. People in the area had bumper stickers that either said, kill the pupfish, or save the pupfish. Thankfully, the save side won, and the cavern was declared a national monument protecting the species. The population has been counted twice annually since the 1970s. It has never surpassed 550. In April 2013, as few as 35 remained in the pool. One of the more recent counts, in September of 2022, found 263 pupfish. Multiple attempts to establish other populations of the fish have failed, and they're still highly susceptible to extinction should any natural disaster occur in the area. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, help me out with a like and a comment. And if you didn't like it, you can comment that too. And if you want to be here for my next video, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.